Okay, it's 9 o'clock, so we have to get started. Welcome to, welcome to worship at Lakeview Lutheran Church. However, you're joining us uh, via Zoom or um, via the videotape throughout the week. Um, we're glad that you're sharing worship with us today. Today is the end of the church year. It is Christ the King weekend, and that means that next weekend begins the season of Advent. Um, that special time uh, that we celebrate before Christmas. And this year during Advent, we are putting ornaments on the Christmas tree that will be up by next um, Sunday because that's Laura's job for Tuesday in between seminary classes is to get the tree and to put it up in the stand and have it ready to go. We're accumulating lots of ornaments with um, the pictures of families um, and households here at Lakeview and that's really cool. And many of them are very unique to the individual's personalities or gifts or characteristics. Except Lynn's, hers isn't unique to her gifts. Hers exemplifies the gifts she doesn't have. Because there's a picture of her cooking Lynn submitted for the tree. So when we get closer to, the, to Christmas, we'll have some times when, you, when the sanctuary door over here, the glass door, will be open. And people will be able to stop in and look at the tree and the pictures so that they're um, all up there for the recording of our Christmas Eve worship service. So we look forward to that. A reminder that um, the uh, blood drive is December 10th and Terry could use some volunteers. So contact Terry if you're able to spend some time that day volunteering for a very important piece of ministry. And also another very important part of that is that you call or go to the website, the Red Cross website, and sign up for a reservation to donate blood. That's what's really significant as well. And I read an article um, just the other day about the significant need for blood that the Red Cross has right now. And so they're really encouraging people throughout the holiday time to respond to blood drives. Thank you to everybody who participated in the lasagna dinner this last weekend. This last week we had a good time doing it, um, cooking it, putting it together and serving it to you and it was really fun to, to connect with people um, in an unusual way but at least the connection was made and, and as Nancy Stilwell said at the end of the night, this almost seems normal. Um, despite the fact that our glasses were all steamed up because we had to wear masks, but it did seem a little normal. I'd also like to note that Darlene Wood, Steve and Darlene Wood are active members here. Um, Darlene has served on the church council, recently went off. Darlene's mother passed away um, Thursday at the Wausau COVID Center um, in the hospital. Um, she was 69, she did have COVID, and she died because of COVID-19. She was a, a perfectly healthy person. So Darlene and Steve are up in um, Stevens Point where her mother lived, where Darlene grew up, and getting things in order for how to celebrate the end of Diane's life. So keep Darlene and Steve and their family. Darlene has one sister and family. Keep them in your prayers. Um, oh, oh, and then finally, the meal in December, I don't know the dates, um, you'll have to look at the newsletter, it went out this week either electronically or um, for those of you who get a hard copy, um, it went out, look at the dates, December meal, scalloped potatoes and ham, green bean casserole, um, uh, fruit salad and a decorated Christmas cookie from Just the Bakery. Uh, we are taking reservations now for that meal and we are going to limit uh, the meals to 200. That's about what we feel we can actually put together in the kitchen and adequately pack up and deliver to you curbside. So um, uh, I know that people are calling in regularly. I took three of them off the voicemail today, so uh, this morning, so stay on top of that as well. Um, I, I hope you all have a, a safe Thanksgiving this week. Um, it's probably going to be unusual, I hope, it's unusual for you. I hope that you're responding to the precautions that we need to be taking right now. Um, I'm sorry it has to be that way. Um, my response is if more people took this virus seriously, we wouldn't have to be in this position. So uh, tell your friends and family and neighbors to uh, wake up and to, uh, to respond. So with that, I will shut up, as I know you're all very anxious for me to do, and we will prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prayer.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. We come today to give thanks and praise for Jesus the Messiah, the Lord's anointed. O oh God, you have given the Christ to free the people from their sins and to let them share in the gift of your salvation. You are a mighty God. In your name we pray. Amen. The hymn of praise this morning is Crown Him with Many Crowns. For those of you who have access, it is ELW 855. The reading for this Christ the King weekend comes from the 25th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of God comes in his glory and all the angels are with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then the king will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. 
Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So I am sure that most of you remember the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz. Some of you even remember when that movie came out in 1939. But do you remember who played the lion in that 1939 movie? I know Lynn over here knows it, so um, I will tell you. It was Burt Lair, in case you forgot. Now, the lion had a desire to be the king of the forest. And of course, since it was a musical, the lion sang the words in order to describe what it would mean to him to be king of the forest. Take it away, Lynn. <laughs> Not Duke, not Prince. My regal robes of the forest would be satin, not cotton, not chintz. I'd command each thing but fish or fowl with a woof and a woof and a royal groan. As I click my heel, all the trees would kneel, and the mountains bow, and the bulls kowtow, and the sparrows would take wing. Why, thank you. Now, if the cowardly lion were king, he'd want fancy robes, and he'd want the mountains and every forest creature to bow down and to genuflect before him. This, of course, would show him the respect that he believed he deserved because he was the king. When E.Y. Harburg wrote those words, he was simply modeling a traditional human understanding of what being an earthly king was like. And even today, we still think of kings in that regard. With our earthly idea of king in mind, it of course can be very challenging for us to then understand the role of Jesus as king. Because Jesus, as you are well aware, was not an earthly king. When Jesus comes in glory as the king, he's not going to be interested in lavish robes, or in seeing how far the people of his kingdom can bow down and genuflect before him. Jesus isn't going to be looking for people in his kingdom to kowtow. As king, Jesus tells us what his expectations are, and he tells us that today in that gospel reading that I just read. As subjects of Jesus' kingdom, he expects us to treat him with respect, to treat Jesus with respect by walking a very different path. Now, respect for Jesus isn't about pageantry and royalty and power. Instead, he tells us that to respect him as the king, we are to give those who are hungry food. 
We are to give those who are thirsty something to drink. We are to welcome the stranger among us. We are to give those without clothing something to wear. And we are to visit those who are sick and those who are in prison. So given that respect, I thought it would be good for us to just, for me to perhaps throw out a few statistics today to reflect how we might be doing as a society with Jesus' request as king. According to the United Nations, 793 million people are starving in the world right now. And 2.1 billion people in the world, or 29% of the world's population, do not have access to safe drinking water. According to the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Report, during the fiscal year 2019, our nation deported 267, 2,258 immigrants or aliens or strangers who were living in our country. ICE also estimates that there are from 10 million to 12 million undocumented immigrants, strangers, according to the gospel, living in the United States right now, and they do not have a safe path to citizenship. According to the 2011 U.S. Census, and I know that's a bit old, but it was the best I could find, there were, at that time, 46.2 million people in the world who could not afford adequate clothing. Right now, and I took this number a little earlier this week, so it's already wrong, but right now, about 52,304,064 people in the world have had the coronavirus, and 1,287,051 people have died from that disease. And still, still to this day, there are those who think that their rights are being violated because they're simply asked to wear a mask to respond to those who are sick in our society. And finally, there are over two million people in our nation who are in prison. They're in prisons, jails, and detention centers. Black inmates make up nearly 40% of the United States prison population, but they only make up 13.4% of the total U.S. population. When you have done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. Amen. The hymn today is all hail the power of Jesus' name, number 634. Thank you to John Dyer, who has come to sing today's hymn. you 
God incarnate, man divine, and crown him Lord of all. The God incarnate, man divine, and crown him Lord of all. Sinners whose love can ne'er forget the wormwood and the gall. Go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball, to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, with that yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord. Thank you, John. Let us pray. God who reigns supreme, we worship you and we express our faith and love for you by loving your creation. Move us to understand and to take responsible actions that are good for our neighbors. We pray for cooperation among the people so that we can overcome this difficult pandemic. Make us wise to act in ways that will prevent the deaths of our friends. Continue to give researchers wisdom as they prepare effective vaccines. Again, we pray for all those affected by shootings, including the families in Sun Prairie and all those in Wauwatosa. Use us to end gun violence and all forms of sexual abuse. Help us to support those who have already been victimized. Guide our decisions to end human trafficking. Bring hope to the victims of Hurricane Iota. As we approach Thanksgiving and Christmas, may we encourage each other to forego traditional holiday events that include gathering and large meals. We give thanks for your gift of salvation in King Jesus and for your promise of eternity for all the saints. Remember those who grieve today, including Russ Fenske and his family as they mourn the death of Russ's mother, and Darlene and Steve Wood as they mourn the death of Darlene's mother due to COVID-19. Bring healing comfort to Georgia, Pam, Mary, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. I invite you to join me as together we pray the, word, the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have a time for personal meditation as Lynn plays. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Thanks be to God. Amen. And before you depart, one final announcement. Given that next week is the beginning of Advent and we will be lighting, um, as we often do, the Advent wreath throughout Advent, I would invite you at home to have an Advent wreath uh, present in your assembly. And whether you watch the service via Zoom or you watch it on videotape throughout the week, I'd invite you to light your own Advent wreath um, throughout the service at the appropriate time. If you don't have a specific Advent wreath, any four candles will work, so I invite you to do that. Have a safe week.